welcome to the second part of our labour and delivery story video. So in this part I'm going to be actually speaking about the nitty gritty, the actual labour. Yes. Okay guys, so it was the afternoon of the 19th or the 18th of July. Um, that morning, early hours of the morning, EJ had gone to Luton, which is out of London, for training. I was at home alone and um, I was laying on the sofa and it was quite hot those days actually. It was when there was like um, some type of heat stroke or whatever it's called. What's it called? Heat, heat wave. Heat wave. Baby rain is real after pregnancy, trust me, it's worse. But yeah, <laughs> heat wave. And um, I think I was laying half naked on the, te on, the te on the sofa in the front room and... Um, my mum called me around 10 a.m. and she said, oh, what are you doing, whatever? And I was just like, oh, no, um, I'm laying down. And that day I actually planned, because the baby was taking so, like, I had given up. Like, every time I thought the baby was going to come, I had done everything, it just wouldn't come. So I was just like, you know what, bunny, I'm just living. It will come when it comes. By this point, everyone was saying to me, you're having a boy, you're having a boy. Boys love their mums and they're lazy, you're definitely having a boy. So I was just like, maybe I'm having a boy. Even I started thinking, yeah, I'm having a boy. So I was like, hey, cool. So I said to my mum, yeah, no, I'm just going to um, tidy up a little bit later. And then I've got plans to go to Cassandra and Carl's anniversary because um, they were having a screening. And then um, she said, OK, then, well, you know, you rest for now and I'll call you later. And I said, yeah, that's fine. All right, bye. So I've woken up, relaxed for a little bit. Then I've gone back to have another nap around midday. And then my sisters called me around one o'clock. So my sister said to me, oh, are you sleeping? And I said, yeah, yeah. Um, I said, she said, I said, what's wrong? She was like, oh, no, no, nothing's wrong. I was just checking to see if you're fine. And I said, yeah, I am. But when I wake up, I'll call you back. And I said, yeah, I'll call you back um, in a few hours. She said, oh, I didn't buy it. That was about 1.03. About 1.13, I heard, and water started gushing down my leg. Literally, I was laying down. So I was thinking, am I weird myself? Or, because I was a bit confused. I was just thinking, like, I must be weeing myself because it was warm as well. Then I was like, no, but I'm not weeing myself because I'm not pushing. I don't feel the urge again. So I stood up, guys, and the water is gushing. And because I had a lot of amniotic fluid, the woman, the nurse did say to me beforehand, make sure that you're prepared because it's going to be like the movies. You're going to have a gush because you've got a lot of amniotic fluid. Guys, it gushed and gushed and gushed and gushed and I stood up and I was so anxious and I was like <sighs> and I was walking around I wasn't even walking around I stood there and I was looking around like how am I going to wipe myself remember I was half naked I'm like where's the t tissue where's the cloth I was so confused and then I was just like oh my god like looking around and <sighs> in that moment it's like EJ knew or something okay nervous wake from my nap do you want to get her? yeah that he does yeah, I'll carry on while he gets her. Yeah, so literally, I was like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? Like, I didn't know what to do. And in that moment, EJ had messaged me and was like, hey, so are you okay? And I was just like, oh my God, I didn't even write, I didn't even know how to call him. I just messaged him saying, call now, call now, call now. And he called me and was like, what's wrong? And I was like, Emmanuel, I was like, my water's just broken, I don't know what to do. And I was like, it's just everywhere. And I was just like, I'm not sure, the water's not clear, the water's not clear. It's not clear like what they said it would be. Cause my water looked like a beigey colour and he was like swords calm down don't worry i'm gonna call my sister she's gonna come and i'm gonna ask her to take to the hospital the hospital i decided to give birth i live nowhere near but i'm not getting i'm never gonna not give birth there <laughs> i was born there and it's the only hospital that i trust you can come with her y'all gonna finally meet little miss nova anyway so we were like okay she's still half asleep guys we were like, okay, um, so the water stopped flowing as much, so I was like, okay, it's not that bad. So I ran into the bathroom, and I'm calling my mum at the same time, and I'm looking at myself like, should I sit on a toilet seat? But I've just bought this cute rug that I don't want to get messy. So I've just stood in the bathtub, just standing there, literally in front of my mum, like, mum, my back, my, 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 literally stuttering, my, 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 my water's broken. And she was like, okay, don't worry, calm down. She was like, she's going to jump in the shower. She's like, I'm going to get ready, don't worry. She was like, who's coming to get you? And I said, EJ's sister Lizzie's coming to get me. And I was like, I'll get you on the way. 
So she was like, okay, don't worry, everything will be fine. And I said to her, but mum, my waters is not clear, it's not clear. And she said, it's fine, don't worry too much about it. She was just like, it's probably um, not your show, your... What was the two things they told me to look for? A bloody yeah, show. Right. I said, shit, it's probably a mucus plug because I'm saying your mucus plug can come out in small bits. So I said, okay, so I've just turned on the tap and I started showering and I'm praying and I'm praying and I'm declaring everything that my, my birth is about to be. And I've come out and then I've put on like sanitary towels and maternity sanitary towels and guys, no joke. I literally went through about five in two seconds. You mentioned that when I messaged you when I Okay. Yeah, that was before. Oh, my bad, my bad. Yeah. So, literally, I went through, like, five in, like, two seconds and changed my underwear, like, five times. So, I said, okay, bond this. I got loads of towels, and I literally was wrapping them around. I looked like, um, is it Tommy from Rugrats? <laughs> I literally looked like a mad That's woman. Hilarious. And then EJ's sister, and I called EJ, and I was like, Yo, it's been 18 minutes, and she's still not here. And he was like, don't worry, so she's coming up, because she doesn't live too far from me. Anyway, she got here and when she came in, I was literally just standing there with a top on and this towel wrapped around me. I was like, I know I look crazy, but I was just like, I'm so sorry. Like, I just looked mad. <laughs> anyway, I was like, can you pick up, um, I was like, pick up EJ some clothes because I remember I just filmed my, um, what's my maternity bag video and people had said to me, make sure you get EJ some clothes. Sorry guys, I had to quickly go feed baby. But yeah, so I was like, oh, to EJ's sister, please keep it pick up some bits from EJ for EJ. And I was just all over the place. Like, secretly, I never thought I would be panicking like that. But I think it was because I was on my own in the beginning. Anyway, we got all the bits together. I literally took like six towels with me to put in his sister's car. Took my maternity bag. And we were ready to go. Okay, guys, so it is... The 18th, sorry, don't look at my hair, but I'm a baby, my edges. But um, it's the 18th of July. I'm currently 10 days overdue. And my water just broke. And it's a long story, but when my water breaks, I have to go straight into hospital. My water broke when I was at home on my own. Um, EJ's out of London working. And um, I was literally having a nap and I just had a pop. And when I say the water gushed, it gushed. And... Um, yeah, his sister's come to pick me up to take me to the hospital. And um, my mum lives right near the hospital, so she's coming. Um, EJ's making his way to the hospital. And by the grace of God, baby should be here today. Let's wait and see. We got in the car. Um, literally about three, four minutes after being in the car, I started getting contractions. They weren't heavy. They were like real mild period pains. And yeah, so I was just like, step on it literally by now i had probably had my water broken for about 45 minutes so i was literally like let's go let's go let's go um i felt perfectly fine though i must say um by this time guys in 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 the car i still had like these maternity pads on and the t another towel around my, myself like a flipping nappy and then i had tracksuit pants on track pants on so if you could only imagine what I looked like, I looked cray cray. I looked cray cray. Anyway, so got in the car, got my mum. By the time um, I was turning into where my mum lives, um, EJ's called me and he's like, so do I, where are you now? And I was just like, oh, we'll just get my mum. And I was like, where are you? And he was literally right by the hospital. Like he got down from Luton that quick he got to the hospital before me so literally so even when i left so i don't know if they touched upon this when i was obviously tell it to baby um i went and told obviously the course director obviously for my training course i was like yeah just just go just yeah let us know good news just go 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 so i've gone now got to the um, train station now and i'm like oh um, i need to change my ticket because my ticket was meant to say to come back on friday because obviously that's when i'm meant to come back for my training course and the lady's like, oh, what's the issue? Oh, I was like, oh, my missus got into labour. She's like, going into labour? You ain't got time to change your ticket. Mate, just go through, hurry up, go, 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 go. And he's like, all the best, good luck. And I was like, oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> so, you get some perks. Oh, no, I forgot, she's like, you know, one second before you go, actually, let me give you a free underground tra travel card. That's when it's going to come London. And she's like, yeah, yeah, go, there you go. I was like, oh, wow. So, there are good people in the world. You know what I mean? People do good things. <laughs> And then yeah, he got there, so we got to the hospital, we parked up, got there, got into antenatal, and they were like, oh, um, 
and I, I had been in there the day before because um, that was my 40, that was when I was 41 weeks. So remember I had to come in every day, whatever, every week, whatever. So um, I was like, oh, hi, I'm back again. I was like, my water broke. And they were like, oh, wow, your water broke. No, no, no. I was just like, yeah. Anyway, they were like, yeah, we're just going to take your blood temperature, oh, your blood pressure and all that stuff. Da, da, da. So they did that. Then um, I was waiting around um, while they had um, like those things on my stomach to hear the baby's heartbeat. They're like, baby's heart's beating perfect, blood pressure's fine, yours is fine, da da da. Um, then one doctor came in and then she was looking at like all the readings of all the machine stuff. Then um, she just literally lifted up my. Um, no. Yeah, she took a urine, my urine, and looked at it, and it just goes, okay, we're going to take you to the birthing centre. And I was like, oh, because I always heard that you get sent back home. So I was like, oh. And she was just like, yes. And I was like, why? She was like, baby pooed in you. She was like, that's, um, she was like, um, but she basically, she just explained that when I was saying that my waters wasn't clear, it was because Nova had pooed in me. And um, basically, what is it called again? Meconium. Meconium. And um, obviously they don't want the baby to get distressed or anything to happen because if the baby swallows the meconium, it can become poisonous for her or him. So they've taken me to the birth centre. I'm feeling quite fine. I'm with EJ, his sister, my mum. And um, I'm just thinking that, you know, God, like, this is it. It's crunch time. Let's get it popping. We can do this. And by now I was having cramps. I wasn't in intense pain. I was just like, okay, I can do this. I can do this. Anyway, got to the birth centre, um, got in the room, and the room was higgy hag. I didn't like it. And I was like, oh, excuse me, please, can I get into another room? I was like, this one's not really nice. I don't, I, I've never imagined giving birth in, you know, and not feeling comfortable. And they were like, okay, that's fine. Once we discharge the other patient, you can use that room. And I was like, oh, thank you. Whatever. Life lesson. If you don't ask, you won't get. <laughs> yeah, so, but I was just a joke. Birth now. Birth now. Yes, birth sweet. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. Yeah. If I didn't do my hair, it would have been a wrap. I would have looked like the African. She's nice and relaxed. That's the most important thing. Mrs. Jones is cool. She's blessed. What do you want? Where is it? Hmm? Where is it? 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 So I was in that room for about an hour and a half now. By this time, guys, it's probably like 4.30, 5 o'clock. And um, all these doctors are coming. They're talking to me about pain relief, pain relief. And I'm like, I don't want no pain relief. Like, I'm fine. And they were just like, you know, have you been told about the intra... Um, what is it? Epidural. No, epidural and something else. There's another one that's like they put in your spine, the spinal. And I was just like, okay, I was like, no, I'm not taking it. And they were looking at me like, are you crazy? So when they walked out the room, I was like, TJ, like, I don't understand why they're so hell-bent on me getting a spike, like, getting pain relief. Like, they're just doing too much. Anyway, when they came back in, the same doctor was like, okay, so um, I'm going to check you um, and we'll take it from there. So I was like, okay, obviously, guys, I've never been checked before. She's put her whole fist up me and... Then she's like, okay, two centimetres, two centimetres, why two centimetres this, two centimetres that. And someone's writing down these notes. And then she goes, okay, if you don't mind, I'm just going to give you a sweep. And she didn't even let me answer. She's like, sweep? And I was like, ah, because the sweep hurt. Yeah? The sweep hurt. And EJ was like, don't worry, he was holding my hand. And I was just like, oh, that's literally what I did. I went, oh. And she was like, okay, okay, it's all done. It was really quick, but it did hurt. And I didn't expect it. The sweep hurt more than being checked, in my opinion. Anyway, so I was just like, oh my god, that was crazy. They walked out, my mum and EJ sisters come back in, and I was just like, no, nah, like, this is crazy. And my mum was like, you know, you're two centimetres, um, you've been in labour for two and a half hours, and, you know, we would want you to be more than that because the baby's pooed inside you, we want to induce you. And I was just like, why? And I was like, can't we wait a little bit longer and see if I go naturally? And she was just like, to be honest, um, you know, when the baby pees inside you, it's a sign of the baby being distressed, and we don't want you to... Um, we don't want the baby's heartbeat to drop and then you'd have to have a c-section already I knew that was not my portion so I said no way okay and then after I was just like okay whatever so in my mind I'm like sugar like this induction like 
I was more thinking in my mind that like, I don't want to get induced and then the induction doesn't speed up the um, contractions and then I end up having to have a c-section like I just didn't want a c-section like more than anything I was like, I don't want a c-section guys I want more than three kids and I know you're only allowed three c three c-sections and once you have one c-section you're more likely to have another one I didn't want a c-section so I was like okay oh my god like god have your way and I was praying I was like you two pray so we went in the toilet and we were praying together meanwhile we had like our background music which was my, my gospel playlist and I was just trying to stay calm and just remember that I was made for this I can do it and all this stuff anyway and then uh, probably about 20 minutes later she's a woman's come back and she's like you know you're gonna have to be in induced we're gonna do an intravenous um called Sinto which apparently is like the strongest type of induction and it's intravenous so it's a hormone that goes into your bloodstream which makes you have contractions at a faster rate and I was like no and they were like okay so do you want a spinal do you want I was like no I was just like like I'm gonna it's fine I don't want nothing Obviously, I was going to have gas in there, but later on, so I was like, no, I don't want nothing. So they were all looking at me like, this girl's crazy. And then my midwife now, that was assigned to me for the whole day, was like, are you sure? And I was just like, yeah, my mum was like, yeah, you can do it, don't worry. And the woman's going, mum, like, it's not really normal to get induced with Sinto and not have um, no pain relief. But at that moment, I felt fine. I was like, no, I can do it. Anyway, they moved us into the other room. Um, it got to like six or seven o'clock and my contractions are coming in now, big time. Remember I was being induced and I don't think I had got my head around what an induction was and the fact that apparently there's state, there's like number levels and I was almost on the top, like I think the, as high as is eight, like level eight or whatever and I was on like 6.5. So it got to a point now where I'm like, ooh, one's coming. I'm like, ooh. Yes. And I'm like just going, ooh. Anyway, EJ's mum and dad's come now and they've bought me crushed ice because y'all know I've been liking ice and bought, bought some food. And I was just like, oh my God, like these contractions are coming, they're coming. And I started getting irritated. So like my mum and EJ's mum are like talking and laughing in the room. Like everyone's just like, you know, trying to just keep it normal and natural. But I'm in my head going, no, 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 the pain's getting peak now. And I, I, no, like by this time it's getting dark outside. It's probably in the summertime, so it's almost nine o'clock. So I've been in labour for uh, about seven hours. Not, this is not, uh, no, okay, about seven hours, yeah. Not active labour, just labour, about seven hours. And I'm like, oh my God, this is mad. Um, so they, I've messaged Asia on the phone. I was like, I'm not gonna lie to you in a minute. Everyone's gonna have to go because I'm starting to get in, starting to get intense, and I can't do this. I just need to focus. And he was like, That's fine, Todd. Don't worry. So a, a contraction's coming, and I'm like, Oh my god, it's coming again. And I'm like, Oh, because now I'm feeling my bone stretching, like my hip, my cervical bone. I can feel it's like a burning pain of it stretching back, and I'm going, Oh my god, Emmanuel. I was like, This is getting intense. And I'm trying not to cause a scene, obviously, because everyone's there. And then, obviously, my midwife could see I was getting frustrated. So she was just like, can everybody come out now? She was like, the pa patient's getting distressed. And they're like, oh, sorry. So anyway, they've gone out to go and wait in the waiting room. And it's just me, my mum and EJ left in the room. And then, within that hour, before I could take the contractions, yeah, especially before the induction, they were, like, going at one then two then three then four with the induction it was going at like two then four then six and eight but guys when it kicked in like after like three hours it went from like two to ten to fifty to ninety to a million and i was like oh like it just no an induction is peak it is peak ed and one were just going don't worry you can do it you're doing well you're doing well mind you i had been being induced now for about four and a half hours and this midwife said to me, don't you want pain relief? And I was just like, I could, no, I was like, no. Like, I don't want pain relief at this point. Then it got to like 10.30 in the night. And I was like, Emmanuel, I want an epidural. I was like, I can't do it. I, no, I was like, it's not even that I was saying, was I saying I can't do it? I was like, this is too much. I was going, this is too much. So what was too much was that the pain was so intense, but you didn't have time to prepare yourself between it. So it's by the time I finished one contraction, I'm like, like, 
oh my god and then i'm like another one's coming because you feel like the swoosh and it's like another one's coming i'm like oh and i'm breathing for it guys i started hula hooping like i was swinging my hips literally like it, this the midwife was looking at me and i know she wanted to laugh but i was looking at her like Nigga, you better not. No, and you gotta <laughs> stay composed and professional before you receive a complaint. <laughs> Listen, but no, they were amazing. But I was going, ooh, and I was hula hooping. I don't want to wait no over up because she's in my lap. But <laughs> I was really hula hooping. Like, I was like, oh my gosh, I can't take this. Anyway, so they were like, hey, so you want an epidural? I was like, yeah, I want an epidural, I want an epidural. So I thought they were going to take hours to get that anesthesia store, if they're called. And anyway, then she just came straight away. She bunked me up high up. She was like to me, you can't move. And I was like, please, I don't want back pain. Because that's the reason why I didn't want an epidural in the first place. I was like, I don't want back pain. And she said to me, if you don't move, then we don't need to keep being certain. And you won't get back pain later on in life. Don't worry, don't worry. So I was like, okay. Anyway, so she's wiped my back. And she's gone, okay, I'm going to put the local anesthetic in or whatever. And she was like, don't move. And I was like... Um, I'm getting a contraction. She was like, wait, let it go. She was like, okay, let's wait for it. Let it go. So it's gone. She's giving it to me. She said, that's good. And she, and she said, okay, now I'm going to give you that. I'm going to insert this rod in. This is what the, where the um, hormones, the epidural is going to come in. She was like, you shouldn't move. So EJ is standing in front of me and the anesthesiologist is behind me and I'm holding on to him and I'm holding on to my midwife. Now my midwife's got the gas in there. She's like, okay, take the gas in there. And then the anesthesiologist is about to start. And I'm like, one's coming and she was just like don't move don't move so when i say it's coming this midwife's putting that gas in, in my mouth and i'm going and i was like and she's trying to still stuff it in my mouth and i was like i don't want it because the gas in air tasted disgusting and i just ugh. i was just like when you're in pain who's got time to be trying to suck like literally i was just like no nah, i couldn't do the both like it was either i breathed through the pain or i took the gas in there so gas in there was out the door for me so i'm holding ej and i'm literally put my head down and i'm just breathing when i say the pain is caning in me i'm breathing 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 giving me the epidural i thought it was going to take like 10 years for it to kick in within 10 15 minutes it had kicked in and literally it went from feeling a billion load of pain to feeling nothing and i was cool the night was going on um, by this time, so I had an epidural at about 10.35 in the night. Um, I was now in active labour. Why are you smiling? Because you're a soldier. Buffalo soldier. I'm tired, guys. What time is it? It's like... 11 o'clock on the dot. 11. I started having proper contractions around quarter to two. And I had to be induced. The baby pooped. And yeah. I was like, I'm not taking no painkillers, no epidural, blah, blah, blah. And then. I've done it for like four and a half hours and it just went wild. It literally went from, let's say the pain was at four, to it went from four, and the next minute it was literally, the next contraction was like nine and a half, then the next one was like 20. I was like, no, I can't do it. But then I was like, hey, let them examine me so I can see how far I am. Bro, I was, I was literally only one more centimetre than I was before. I said no way. But now I'm happier because I'm three more centimetres than I was before or when they last checked me. So hopefully now I'm even more than that by the grace of God. But I'm tired. So I'm going to catch some zeds. EJ has been the star. So before I took my epidural, they checked me. And I was about, yeah, go ahead, yeah, yeah, and I was about four centimetres dilated. That's when I was like, give me the epidural, because I was like, how have I gone all these hours and I'm only four centimetres? Straight after the epidural, I was five centimetres. And then at midnight, they came and checked me, 
and I was seven centimeters. So I was like, we're getting there, we're getting there. Um, anyway, seven centimeters at midnight. Um, I remember that night the storm was coming, so there was a storm. It was raining, 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 and there was thunder and lightning, and we were really high up in the hospital and we were overlooking like the river. It was beautiful. So I was just like in and out of sleep. My mum was in and out of sleep. Um, EJ was in and out of sleep, and um, it was just so serene. There was like gospel in the background, and it was just beautiful. And then um, I had all of these straps on me on my stomach because they were um, monitoring the baby's heartbeat, and. At one point, I remember it was so sudden, like everything was so quiet and peaceful. And then all of a sudden, in the middle, I just went, we can't find the baby's heartbeat, and, and pressed this red button. And then I remember being like, what? Like the way she said it, it was so dramatic. And then all these doctors burst in the room. And I was just thinking in my head, I'm not even scared. Like, I, honestly, that was the one part of the day, of the labour, that I was just like, no heartbeat. I was like, hmm, this is not my child. Like, this is God's child. I was like, there's a heartbeat. Like, I wasn't even phased, so I didn't know. So they all burst in. You're right, there, baby girl. They all burst in and was like, um, they all burst in and was, did you guys see that? This is so nova. Every minute fight. Yeah. Um, they all burst in and was like, oh no, no, no heartbeat, da 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 da. And they bought like this machine which brings um which is like a manual version of checking the heartbeat. So this doctor's coming and she's put this thing up me and she was like, um, no, she was like, we found a heartbeat, the baby just moved. And I was just like, so you re really just drops me like that, all because you didn't realise that the baby moved. So I was just like, rubbish, I was just annoyed. Anyway, they all went out. The, they were going, it was, the evening was going still, or morning, was going still, going still, going still. About one o'clock, the doctor came and checked me, and um, she was just like, she'll come and check me again, um, in, I think she said three hours. So it should have been four o'clock. But she then came around 3.30 and was like, oh, what time did I say I was going to come? And she was like, oh, it was meant to be 4 o'clock, but it's fine, I'll check you now. So she's checked me and she's checking me and she's just like, okay, I'm just going to check you. She's checked me, checked me, checked me, whatever. And then she's gone, okay, so I'm just going to ask you, I want you to bring your chin into your chest and I want you to push. And I was just like, okay. So I'd done what she said. And then she was like, okay, so I want you to do it again and do it stronger. So I've done it again, I've done it stronger. She was like, amazing, perfect. Mind you guys, I've got ep epidural. I don't have a clue what I was even doing. I was even thinking like, what am I doing? Because she's saying to me I'm doing it well, but I'm thinking like I'm not even doing anything. She was like, okay, cool. So we're going to do that a few more times and then the baby will be here. And I was like, sorry. So if you saw my face, I look so disgusted. Because she didn't tell me that, okay, we're delivering the baby now. So, obviously, I'm a first-timer. What does bring your chin to your chest mean? I don't know. And then you wake up, literally, we're about to start pushing. My mum was up and ready. And the woman said to me, you've got 20 minutes to push the baby out. If not, we're going to take you to the theatre. I'm assuming that was because the baby's head was there and just she didn't want the baby to get into distress. <sighs> Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he didn't revive. Maybe you heard it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what we she's like okay that's amazing perfect do that again in my head i'm thinking do what again do i know what i'm doing 
like this is the only time when I was actually like okay god you're gonna have to take the wall because I genuinely don't understand what it is that they even want me to do so and because I couldn't feel it was like double mm. trouble can I have some water please I mean, I don't think that's good. So, do you see a good action? Yeah, now, come on. Really hard, really hard, really hard. Come on, come on, come on. And then you think you can't do anything, right? Just do one more and just sustain one. Yeah, sustain one. And the last one. Yeah? Do one more. That's it. Yeah. And keep it going till you can't do anymore. Yeah, keep it going. So you have to make it very long, hard and strong pushes, yeah? Like sustained ones. that's good that's good i'm pushing and she's like okay that's good she's like pant 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 so i stop and i'm pant she's like don't push and i was just like okay then she was like baby's face is stuck it's squashed hey. and i was like huh and i was like oh but at that time i just felt like uh pressure there and i was just like oh and i was like i feel to push can i push and she was like okay if you feel to push push so a contraction came and i just pushed and she was like okay and they were like baby's head's out and everyone was and the man was like go on towards you're doing good keep going he was like you're doing so good my mom was like that's it go on go on go on i was like oh my gosh and like in my head i was just like okay i didn't know what i was doing so i wasn't even getting gas so i was just like okay so was, come on you can do this you can do this and then i pushed again and she was like stop the woman told me to stop, so I stopped. And then she was like, Mom, talking to my mom, she was like, Can you pull that red string? And then my mom was like, huh? She was like, That red string, can you pull that red string? So my mom's pulled the red string. All these doctors are bursting her into the room again. She's like, um, oh. baby's arm is stuck. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. She was like, baby's arm is stuck. We were like, oh. I was like, huh? Like baby's arm stuck. I just thought once the head was out, the whole body slips out. So, um, they were all like, this woman came, rushed over to me, and reclined my my bed all the way back. Mind you, my legs were up with stirrups. I was like, what are you doing? And she was just like, um, you're gonna have to lay it straight back if you wanna put. And I was like, no, but how am I supposed to push? with my head laid, like with laying straight back? It didn't make no sense. Logic. Because mind you, remember guys, I can't feel anything from like my pelvis down so i was like what and then she was just like you're just gonna have to and i was just like i was vexed and my mom could see i was vexed then they were just like look you need to push and then my mom just got my head back and pushed my head up like in sit up position so my mom was holding my head up for me so obviously i wasn't all the way back and she was just like you need to push because the baby's arm stuck and then she was like one two three and then i just pushed and then she just flew out yeah. just like that I did it in nine minutes. Literally, so I pushed her out in nine minutes. She, when she flew out, um, they were like, oh, um, yes, baby's out. And I was like, Emmanuel. I was like, all these times, guys, throughout the whole entire thing, I had her cried not once. Then I was just like, Emmanuel. I was like, does it have hair? Does it have hair? And he was like, there's lots of hair swords. There's lots of hair. Then I figured in my head, in my head like, huh? I haven't heard nothing. I didn't hear the baby cry. All the doctors were quiet. So I was thinking, what the hell? Then I was like, I was like, what is it? And I, no, I didn't say what it is. I was like, don't say who, what it is, please. I want my husband to tell me. And then I, I was like, Emmanuel, what is it? And everyone was quiet. But in my mind, I wasn't even thinking anything of it. I could just see that all, everyone's arms were like move, moving and stuff. I don't know what they were doing. I'm assuming maybe they were clearing up like <gasps> suction in her throat because she didn't cry straight away. Then I was like, Manny, what is it? And then the midwife lifted her up and Emmanuel was like, it's a girl. And then we both high-fived and we were so happy because secretly, I was happy with a boy because I've always wanted a boy all my life. But 
I don't know. I just wanted that. I just had. I couldn't envision myself with a boy throughout my whole pregnancy, and I kept on saying that. And I know he secretly always wanted a girl. You're right there. You playing with your daddy? Yeah, he secretly always wanted a girl. And yeah, so baby, li the um, midwife lifted her, her up and showed us her beautiful self. They took her over, cleaned her, and then put her on me. And then, no, when she started crying, guys, no, they took her over, when they took her over to clean her, she started bawling. That's when I just started crying. Been through labour, I was like, What? Crazy. Pretty cool. Hello, babes. Really tasty, smally, not smally. I don't know what's in the pot. Hello, Miss Jones. Hello, Miss Jones. Welcome to the world. See a new kid study now. <laughs> See, here they pass, pass, they look at me. All these voices I'm have been here. Don't worry, I need to give mommy another one. Mm. <laughs> All these voices you've been hearing. Oh my god. Oh gosh, thank god. <laughs> Are you hungry? Look at this, she scrunched up her face. Oh, no. <laughs> She's like, where am I? Who is these people? When her arm got stuck, um, what I didn't know was that the midwife was help. When I pushed, the midwife had pushed her hands in to help me pull her out as well. Um, yeah, so I had a second degree tear. It was a muscle tear in the inside opening. So she stitched me up real good. <laughs> and I was like, make sure you stitch me up good because I want to make sure that, you know, I'm good and right for my husband, you know. Uh, and she was like an African lady. She was just like, don't worry, I'm African. I know what I'm doing. Now. Doing good girl. It's been a long, long night. Mm -hmm. Where you made it from? Are you a star girl? Proper star girl. Why thank you. You've got two star girls now. Trust me. Anyway, and then yeah guys, um, literally I gave birth at ten past four in the morning and I was discharged by five in the afternoon. So yeah, baby was clear, she didn't take no meconium, I was perfectly fine, our heartbeats were fine, our, our heart rates are fine, blood pressures were fine, everything was really good, got home and literally it's been great. Um, I will be doing a video on my aftercare, aftercare of um, giving birth because I feel like a lot of people didn't tell me a lot of things that I went through and honestly I personally think that the aftercare was a lot more painful than labor just saying that's my experience overall the experience itself was a beautiful one i can't say i would change it at all it was amazing it was everything god wanted it to be 
and it just showed me how strong I was. More than anything, I'd say that labor and delivery, Ooh. specifically delivery, okay, talking. You said hello. Labor and delivery is very emotional. It's an emotional, physical, it's everything. So, you know, just prepare yourself and be positive. Like, you can do it, we can all do it. And labor is temporary. You go through it, you're not in it forever. So, it's a positive experience. And to be honest, this little beauty came out of it. So, honestly, I'll do it 10 times over. Uh, I just wanted to add, like, lads, fellas, those of you that obviously have had children, do you find that you had a, like a new fond respect for your partner, for your woman? I thought, I don't know, I definitely did. I was like, wow, like you went through all of that and like you're the superwoman, like you're just that I lady. Like, I was like, I thought I rated you, but I got a new rating, a new, I put you on a different type of pedal store, do you know what I mean? So just witnessing your missus go through all of that and just being amazing, I'm like, yeah, man, she a real G. So, and you married to a real G, so I thought I'd share that with you guys, you know. For me, that was amazing. Because, you know, yeah. yeah. EJ was amazing during the whole thing. Him and my mum together were like my dream team, honestly. And um, a lot of people were like, so now you've had a baby, do you want to do it again? I'm like, yep, I still want five kids, baby. One down, four to go. And to be honest, if God says more, then so it shall be. Everybody, meet baby Nova. Say hi. You know, she mean mugging. Yeah, she, she's crazy. She's Eva. Yeah, no. so, Her facial down. expressions are Eva. Sorry, she's James. a mean mugging or she's smiling and Sorry, she's giving James. her observant face because she's very, very observant. And I love it. So, babes, I'm uh, mommy's put you on there for too long. Oh. Look at her cheeks. Oh. She looks startled like, what the? Mind you guys, she was just sleeping and then I fed her. So, yeah. This is Nova, this is EJ, this is me. Three hearts, one beat, one beat. meet the Joneses. Mm. She's well not interested. Yeah, she's like, I like, all right, she's guys. She's like, cut my cheeks, no. She's like, I've enough now. I love her. Beautiful. She's a really, really, really good girl, guys. So yeah, I'm just happy. Yeah, that's my labor and delivery story, guys. If you got any questions for me, leave them down below. Um, and yeah, tell me about your labour and delivery stories. If you were given birth around the times I was, how did yours go? I pray it went well. And uh, maybe one day we'll do a meet and greet and do a little play date with all the babies or something. Who knows? But anyway, Baby guys. meet and greet. Who knows? Anyway, guys. Rate, comment and subscribe. Tell a friend, tell a friend. And if you know someone that is pregnant, let them watch this video. Just to encourage them that they can do it. Have a good day, guys.